Hey everyone, welcome to your university, the place where we talk all about the Dragon Ball universe. Today, we are going to go through Beerus discovering the terrifying truth about Goku's power. And if you would like to see more Dragon Ball content, please leave your like and subscribe to join our university. No matter which part of Dragon Ball we are following the series, Goku will always be the most powerful until the appearance of a superior villain whom the protagonist can eventually overcome in some way. Despite his tremendous strength, it is not uncommon to see Goku being defeated by his opponents. In fact, this seems to happen every time a new villain appears in the universe, forcing the character to train more and more until he gets a new level of power capable of defeating his opponent. And this is precisely why Goku is always considered the strongest, even though he has been defeated so many times. Each defeat in Goku's life forces him to increase his level of dedication and to exceed his own limits until he is able to overcome his opponent. This is actually a characteristic that was later attributed to the Sahian race, a naturally warlike race with a great passion for confrontation. Therefore, it is difficult to say whether Goku pushes his own limits because of his love for the Earth and the Universe 7, or if it is simply because he loves, fights and always wants to become stronger, or, perhaps, by some other explanation that can still be given in more detail. After all, is there a more logical explanation for this other than script convenience. Why would Goku be more powerful than Vegeta, considering that the Prince of the Sahians, in theory, would have had more training time and focus on the art of getting stronger than the protagonist? In today's video, we will discuss a bit regarding what might make Goku, in fact, so powerful, and whether he might possess the ability to surpass the gods at some future point in the work. People always claim that Goku has no natural talent at all and had to train for his entire life in order to become what he is. However, However, Vegeta had natural talent and he trained much harder than Goku, fighting stronger opponents, trained in heavier gravity, trained in Naruesati for longer, and trained in high gravity for seven years. Could this really just be scripted, or is there a more logical explanation behind these events? On his way to the planet Namek, Goku was just killing himself and devouring Senzu beans. Vegeta never had the opportunity to train that way without having to use that water healing thing that takes forever to heal someone compared to a Senzu. In fact, a lot of that is natural talent. In the episode where Goku and Majin Vegeta fight, Vegeta tells Goku that he became susceptible to Babidi's magic because he knew that he alone was no match for Goku. And explicitly you were born with so much natural talent that no matter how much I trained, you were always one step above me or something like that. Watch the episode. The natural talent is part of the reason. Goku was always motivated to become stronger whenever the lives of his friends or anyone else were at stake. Like when he became SSJ in Kiriran's death. Vegeta is motivated by an obsession. There is no sincerity in his motivation. He is very selfish. His obsession to become stronger than Goku overshadowed his need to protect his family. Proper motivation is key. That said, we can say that Vegeta is not, and never has been, weaker than Goku. The perceived imbalance of raw power and Goku's ability to take on and defeat stronger enemies has nothing to do with actual battle strength, fighting power, power level, or whatever you choose to call it. It has everything to do with Goku's upbringing. He grew up on Earth, learned to fight on Earth, and absorbed a uniquely earthly way of doing things, including getting power. What this means is that Goku learned to get stronger by approaching masters and learning new techniques. He therefore always had a repertoire of attacks, transformations, and techniques at his disposal that was superior to Vegeta's. But this is not the Sahian way. We know this because at no time has Vegeta ever approached anyone and asked to learn anything. This is because of true Sahian pride, which, as a concept of honor, can easily put someone at a disadvantage. A list can be provided, at each stage, of the advantages mentioned that Goku possessed in terms not of raw power, but special techniques often learned from other races, or advantages in transformations. Indisputably, Goku was considerably weaker than Vegeta in the Sahian saga, even with all his advantages. 
With access to Kaioken, the Spirit Bomb, and the powerful Kamehameha Wave, Vegeta's power was clearly superior. This is understandable and expected, since Vegeta was the villain at that time. In the Namek Saga and the Jinyu Saga, one can assume that for a brief period, because of Goku's intense gravity training and Senzu being Chiti Chidi on his way to the planet Namek, he may have surpassed Vegeta in raw power for a short time. With the Zenkai experimented by Vegeta, this gap narrowed or even disappeared completely. One thing to note during the Frieza Saga is Frieza's feline nature. He likes to play with his prey, always choosing to suppress his true power, allowing the opponent to believe he had a chance, and only increasing his power when the opponent became a threat. Vegeta was no match for Frieza at this stage, having won only by inciting Vegeta, making him angry, and making him question himself. This worked because of Frieza's fourth form and what it was all about. Speed. By forcing Vegeta into a state of rage, any chance of Vegeta actually hitting a blow evaporated. Vegeta actually had a chance, he just didn't use it optimally. By the time Frieza went on the offensive, his psychological warfare was in full effect. Vegeta's pride was gone, he was questioning himself and his strength, and was even crying. Frieza didn't seem to have the need to do that before. Conclusion. Vegeta was a serious threat, which Goku was not not until he reached Super Saiyan mode. Even at Kaioken X20, Goku could barely do anything with Frieza. He increased his power to fight Goku, but the question is, how much? He said he was using only a small fraction of his power previously. The dubious part of that statement is that transformations of any kind don't seem to work that way. That also explains the 4.5 muscle shape Frieza had the unique ability to change his focus all the time, and now he was all offensive. This is what led Goku to defeat Frieza, even as a Super Saiyan. In conclusion, even after intense gravity training, where Goku was allowed to cheat using Senza beams, Goku was not necessarily stronger than Vegeta. One could argue that Goku was in fact weaker. However, Vegeta not only failed to ascend to the next form, he made mistakes. Frieza had the added advantage of knowing the prince since he was a child. He knew what Sahians could bring, so he kept Vegeta and watched him, deliberately learning his weaknesses. Frieza had advantages against Vegeta that he simply did not have against Goku. Also, psychological warfare would never work on Goku any more than it would work on a brick. There are certain advantages to being a dumb protagonist. Still comparing Goku and Vegeta, we can name a few other sagas and situations to consider. The first of these would be the Trunks Saga, where we would need to consider Vegeta's intense training in 300x gravity, while Goku was forced to waste time trying to get his driver's license. Vegeta trains with the fervor of thinking that Goku had surpassed him. During the Android Saga, there is simply no data for comparison, except to say that Vegeta fought while Goku was lying in bed recovering. The fact that they show Android 18 clearly outclassing Super Saiyan Vegeta and fighting prowess may seem odd, but let's remember that at this stage, the most powerful fighters like Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta had not yet outclassed the rest. With the perfect Cell Saga already underway, we can observe that inside the hyperbolic time chamber, where both Goku and Vegeta had the chance to train, Vegeta barely acknowledged Trunks' existence, while Goku, thinking of passing the torch so that this time someone else would be the savior, focused mainly on his son's improvement. Another point is that Vegeta actually hurt Perfect Cell. Once again, Vegeta loses focus and his pride becomes a weakness when he sees how strong Cell has become by absorbing the last android. However, there is more than his pride at work here. When presented with a stronger opponent, Vegeta's greater intellect simply doubts much more, unlike his rival. Goku has no such weakness. Yet still, even with his pride working against him and his doubt eroding, Vegeta manages to hurt Cell very badly with a final flash. Even at this point, when there is no further evidence of this, Vegeta still believes that Goku is one step ahead. Another serious question arises from the fact that Vegeta hesitated so much with his intermediate Super Saiyan 2 form. Could he have done it correctly like Gohan? We'll never know because he didn't even try. He overcalculated and guessed, deciding that the form was useless from the start, while Trunks at least tried against Cell. 
Yet another case where Vegeta has a disadvantage not in raw power level, but in the ability to switch to a higher transformation. During the Baby D saga, it is of great importance to mention that Vegeta and Goku were on a level playing field when the prince was gifted with Babidi's Majin ability. In the first place, Baby D didn't even make any promises to Vegeta about more power. He said he would return Vegeta's power to what it was before he changed. There is a difference, however, between turning a mosquito into a fly and turning a cat into a lion. The amount of raw power that Babidi's magic can impart can be a fixed amount, not an exponential increase. Second, although Vegeta's extreme pride played a role in his ability to resist mind control, the fact that the magic didn't fully work on him may have been a sign that he was too strong to actually work in the first place. If Vegeta got anything out of Baby D, it was simply that, an excuse. He got an excuse to be bad. He believed that Goku had surpassed him, and even tried to become more like Goku in an attempt to correct that. This may have provided a release that Vegeta so desperately needed to realize his own potential, but it was his own potential. During the Buu saga, Goku surpasses Vegeta in this arc, and the gap between them becomes outrageous. However, it should have been that way, as Goku once again has an advantage in his transformations. This was after he fought Fat Buu as an SS3, and while Goku may have intended Buu to turn against Baby D, he is not the type to really lie. So his praise of Fat Buu about being a good and challenging fighter was genuine. Fat Buu, who challenged Goku in SS3 form, was beaten to the point of regeneration by Vegeta, and Goku should have an exponential advantage. Let's move on to Kid Buu in the final battle. When Vegeta runs out of energy and falls, Kid Buu's attacks should have killed him. However, if he stayed that way for so long, it was a sign of his true power. His basic power, which is not usually questioned in a world where people are always learning new transformations, just in time to fight the next powerful enemy. Vegeta did just as well as Fat Buu, and he did it in his basic form. Now let's examine Goku, and how and why he actually won. First, he had a repertoire of techniques tipping the scales in his favor. Secondly, as we talked about before, he had the SS3 form at his disposal, but there is another problem here, and that is the problems with Goku's energy. He can't stay in that new form for very long. Maybe it wasn't just a matter of Vegito achieving his transformations late, but Goku achieving them earlier than usual. As a final reflection, at the end of Dragon Ball Z, Goku's abundant energy supplies have always been an important factor. Other characters falter and fall because they are simply beaten up. Goku launches huge waves of Kamehameha and empties himself of energy. This fighting style is available to him because he has plenty of it. It makes him look stronger, but he really isn't. Having said all that and remembering these details, we can easily state that Goku is not necessarily more powerful than Vegeta. And even if it's just a little, it doesn't mean that it's something just driven by the script. There is a journey of justifications that can and should be taken into account in this case. This is even better than just saying Goku is strong because he is the protagonist, duh. Because from the moment we always know that he will get more powerful with each saga, always surpassing everyone around at some point with some specific situation. It is super possible that he will surpass the gods in the near future. This may even be a little frightening. Isn't it? If the characters themselves realize this grandiose ability to scale power, they would probably fear Goku, and that involves the gods of destruction themselves, plus many others. Maybe Goku himself wouldn't understand at first, but eventually he would become more and more powerful, perhaps still believing that it was all through his training and willpower, when there are many justifications behind what he actually imagines. But what about you? Do you think Goku can really surpass the gods? Will he achieve such absurd power that we can't even imagine yet? Leave your opinion in the comments. That's it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions for videos, don't forget to comment here below because I'll be reading all of them as I always do. Also, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any content from your university.